What's up guys? We are here for our full class for our Bend Your Bod Challenge. I can't believe it's already over. I feel like the month of May just went by so fast, but yeah, we're doing a full class today. Um, should be close to an hour long. I want you to have any props with you that you need for your body. So it could be a strap, strap, block and a strap together, strap, block, um, a little pillow because we're going to be working on some crow pose if you need a little crash mat. Um, anything that you need for you and your body, totally fine. Um, I'll kind of throw in some prop modifications here and there, but we're going to get right into it. We're going to start in child's pose. So um, find your child's pose. I'm going to try to like stay up so you can hear my voice. If I go put my face down on the mat, you probably won't be able to hear me very well, but your child's pose. Um, you know, I like wide leg as child's pose. You can bring your knees as wide as your mat, or you can take regular child's pose with your knees in. Sink your heels down towards your, your, um, your hips down towards your heels, and then outstretch your arms. Overhead, drop your chest, your belly to the mat. So find your child's pose, any variations or modifications you like. Settle in. And just start to check in with your body. See how you're feeling? Not changing your breath in any way just yet. Just noticing what's going on. What's going on today? How do you feel after the challenge? Do you feel stronger? Do you feel more flexible? Maybe you feel sore. Maybe you feel tight because we've been doing a lot of yoga and I know that, I mean, obviously the point of yoga is to get, and not the point of yoga, but it get, helps you get flexible, helps you get strong. But sometimes after doing a really intense yoga class, the next day I'm like, dude, I can't move. Like yoga is hard. It's a workout and it's okay to be sore and it's okay to feel certain things and it's your body. And that's why we check in and we don't attach judgment to how we feel. We just notice it. What's going on? So in your child's pose, start to do that. Start to check in, notice what's going on with your body and then start to bring your awareness to your breath. So start to visualize your breath as it goes in and out through your nose, bringing your awareness to the present. When we picture that breath going in and out through our nostrils, we're literally, we're forcing our brain to have something to focus on. So we're not thinking about what we have to do after class, what we're doing before class, we're just thinking about our breath and literally picturing it as it goes in and out through your nose. If you'd like, you can engage your Ujjayi breath here. Ujjayi breath is an audible breath in the back of your throat. I like to call it Darth Vader breath. It's like you're fogging up a mirror or a window, but keeping your mouth closed. So it's in and out through your nostrils. And our intention for class today is just to, to celebrate. You made it through a whole 30 days of yoga, guys. 31 if you include today. Like, you're amazing. And take this class and, and use this intention to bring it back to what your body can do and how amazing and capable your body is. No matter what modifications you have to take, like it's incredible. Yoga makes it incredible and you're incredible. And make that your intention for the day. So from your child's pose, we're gonna take some side stretches here. So go ahead and walk your hands over to the right, stretching out that left side body. We're, we're always breathing, so never forget your breath. Go ahead, walk your hands through center, and then over to the left. And then go ahead and walk your hands back to center. We'll slowly press up to our tabletop position. And I want you to come to your knees. We're gonna get our gate pose in here. So we're gonna incorporate every pose. They're not gonna be in order, but every pose from our challenge is going to happen in this class. So come to your knees for your gate pose. Since we did those child's pose side stretches, let's get a little bit deeper into our sides. We'll start with the right leg, staying on the left knee. Your right leg goes out straight. Toes pointing to the short edge of your mat. And then just take a nice side bend. Now, a lot of the times here we go really far and, and that hip starts to go um, out from directly above your knee. Try to stay with your hip directly in line with that knee. Just taking a side bend here. Trying to keep your chest up open to the ceiling. Go ahead and inhale, come back up and switch sides. Again, taking any modifications that you need for your body that you know work for your body. I'm sure you've discovered them throughout this challenge. And go ahead and come back up. Come to your knees. We're going to 
come to our puppy pose here. So similar to our child's pose, our hips are over our knees. You're gonna outstretch your arms and you're gonna drop your chest to the mat. So really getting that back stretch, that back bend, chest opener, shoulder opener. You can gaze up towards your hands if that you want a little bit more intense of a stretch. And always remember to breathe when we're in these intense postures. So about three more breaths here. Again, take any variation you like. If you like to maybe bring your hands to prayer, get even more of a chest opener. You can put your hands on blocks if you're like, wow, oh, this is too easy, I want more. And when we're ready, press into your hands to slowly come out. We're gonna to come to our frog pose, so a nice big hip opener here. Making your knees as wide as they can go, as wide as you're flexible. Similar to our wide legged child's pose, but this time our feet are coming out directly underneath our knees at a 90 degree angle. You can stay up here, you can come down to a block, or you can come all the way down to your chest. Again, whatever is accessible for you and your body. Really deep hip opener here. You're trying to keep your hips in line with your knees. You don't want to sink forward or go too far back. You should be able to feel this in your knees here. Bring it back to our breath. Two more breaths. Up, we're going to take it to our cobra pose. So you're coming directly to your belly. We'll do a little low cobra flow first. So hands underneath the shoulders. Inhale, just lift the chest. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift the chest, maybe hover the fingers. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift the chest, maybe this time hover your hands. And exhale, release. I'll take it to a full cobra. So when you're ready, slide your hands back a little bit so they're right next to your rib cage. If um, low cobra is where you want to stay, please feel free. If you want to try out a high cobra, inhale, press up, pressing your pelvis into the mat, opening up the chest. Make sure you're not dipping into the shoulders, you're pressing actively away from the mat. Get over the throat chakra, lean your head back. Take a nice big inhale here, and exhale lower back down to your belly. We're gonna to come to a tabletop position soon. Just go ahead and press up into your table. We'll take some cat cows here. I know it's not part of our poses, but I feel like the yoga class isn't complete without cat cows. <laughs> so go ahead and inhale, drop the belly. Open up the chest, gaze goes up, arching your back. Exhale, round the spine, drop the head, don't knock the shoulders. Inhale, open up for your cow. And exhale, round for your cat. I want you to take four, five more rounds of this on your own breath, linking your breath to your movement. And take anything that feels good here. If you like to rock your hips from side to side, if you like to shake your head, yes and no. Again, we're always listening to our body and what it, what it needs. up whatever round you're on come back to a neutral spine we're going to take some side planks here i like to do modified side planks just to get our core a little bit warm i'm going to start with the left side so you can see what i'm doing you're going to kick out that left foot leg it's a little kickstand of the side put all your weight into the left side of your body extend that right leg out and open up so modified side plank here you can lift up that back foot if you want more of a challenge you can come to full side plank here finding your edge maybe flex that back foot we hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and release. Come back to your tabletop. We're going to take it to the other side. So from your table, kicking out that right leg like this little kickstand, shifting all your weight over. And go ahead and open up. Take whatever variation you took on the other side. And hold. 
hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and release back into your table. We're gonna find our first downward facing dog. So go ahead and tuck your toes. Inhale those hips up and back. Keep the wall behind you. Now your first downward dog. Spend some movement here. Pedal out your feet. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. Shake out your hips. A little trick I like to use to get deeper into my downward dog. I bend at the knees, draw my chest closer to my thighs, and then re-straighten the legs. Breathing here. Find some stillness in your pose. Go ahead and inhale, gaze to the top of your mat. Exhale, step forward into your forward fold. So hang out in your forward fold here again, our first forward fold of class. You can grab for opposite elbows. You can give your legs a hug. You can keep a bend in your knees if you need to. Just hanging out here for a couple breaths. When you're ready, bring your hands to your shins, press into them, inhale for a halfway lift, left spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up to mountain pose, and exhale your hands to your heart center. So we've all already hit a lot of poses, especially in our vinyasas. You're hitting your mountain pose, your forward fold, your chaturanga, your downward dog, your upward dog. So we're hitting a lot of poses here, just in this little flow. So we're going to take a couple of mini half vinyasas from the top, a little half sun salutation. So bring your hips, um, feet hips distance apart. On the inhale, your arms up. Exhale, take a fold over your legs. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come up to standing. And exhale, hands to heart center. I love to do these to just like start my day off. It just kind of hits all the good points, I think, for a little morning warm-up. That's why they call them sun salutations after all. Inhale, your arms up. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come up to your mountain pose. And exhale, hands to heart center. We're going to do one more, then we're going to start to add on. Inhale, your arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Go ahead and plant the hands. Now step it back to your high plank. So high plank, head is in line with your hips. Nice straight spine, shoulder, elbow, wrists are all in line. We hold for five, four, three, two, and one, we're going to take a chaturanga. So if you need to drop to your knees and take it from your knees, please do. If not, we're taking our chaturanga. We're inhale, shifting the shoulders forward. Exhale, bending at the elbows, keeping the elbows squeezed really tight into your body. So shift forward, squeeze. Chest goes down first. And you inhale, chest through the arms, up to your upward facing dog. And then exhale, flip the toes for your downward facing dog. So we're going to do a couple of those as we go through our flow. I know chaturangas and vinyasas are hard, but we got to build that strength. When you're ready, inhale your right leg up and back through three-legged dog. Exhale, draw the knee into the chest. One, two for a lunge. We're going to come right up to our warrior one here. So this back foot is coming to a 45 degree angle, maybe a little bit shorter stance. You're just going to inhale straight up, bending into the front knee, making sure your knee stays over your ankle. The hips are square to the front of your mat. And we breathe here. This is a great preparatory pose for your splits. That closed hip, that closed hip, but flexible hamstrings. <laughs> All right, we're gonna open up to a warrior two. So inhale here, exhale, open up. You might need to take a bigger stance to your warrior two. So again, near of the ankle, back foot is parallel with the short edge of your mat. Hips are open this time. So we're going from a closed hip to an open hip. Arms are out. Make sure your shoulders aren't shrugged up to your ears. All right, we're going to transition into a warrior three. So we're going to come back to a high lunge to the closed hips. So coming to a high crescent lunge, you can keep your hands on your hips. Now we're going to start to put all this weight into this front leg and just start to lean forward till you can pick up that back foot. Really flexing the back foot is going to help you keep your core active. Keep your legs active, find your balance. Focus your gaze on something that's not moving. Maybe you bring your hands to heart center. Maybe you take airplane arms. Maybe you 
extend out overhead, find your variation, and breathe here. Now we're going to open up to a half moon, so you might need a, a block here under your hand, or you can do it without a block. And you're just opening up the hips. Maybe you reach that other left arm overhead, you bring your gaze up, flexing the back foot. And then we're going to slowly woo, release back into our lunge. So just bring that back foot back down. You can get rid of that block. Getting back into a lunge position. Place your hands on the mat. Press into your palms. You can just go to your regular downward dog or a table. If not, we're going to press back to our three-legged dog. And then go ahead and release your downward facing dog. You still got the other side. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, knee into the chest, plant it for your lunge. Now we're coming right up to that warrior one. So inhaling up. Again, back foot is at a 45 degree angle, flat on the mat. Front foot is flat, knee is over the ankle, hips are closed. And we breathe. Inhale here, exhale, open up to your warrior two. Again, you might need to take a little bit wider of a stance. Take a second to relax those shoulders. All right, we're gonna come back to a closed hip position to get to our warrior three. So closing off the hips, coming to a high crescent lunge, you step without our arms up, our hands are on our hips. Put all your weight into that front leg and just start to lean forward until you can pop up. Again, any arm variations here you like. Don't forget to breathe. Now we're going to open it up to our half moon. So leave that block. Start to open up the hips. Ooh. Good to have a wall by you. I don't know why my balance is off so much today, guys. Go ahead and open up. Don't forget to breathe. And then we're going to slowly release back into our lunge. Just slowly release that foot back down. Get that block out of there. Plant your hands, press into your palms. Step back to your three-legged dog. And then we have a rest. So find a resting pose that works for you. It can be a child's pose. You can hold your downward dog. If you want to take a vinyasa, chaturanga be my guest. Spend three to five breaths in rest. Get some water. I'm getting right into it, guys. We've got a lot of poses to get through. I'm trying to put them all into this class, so that might be why it seems a little hectic, but we've got a lot of poses to do, and we got this. I never said it was going to be easy, but I know you can do it. Two more breaths wherever you're resting. All right, when you're ready, we're going to meet in our downward facing dog. You're going to inhale, gaze at the top of your mat. Exhale, travel to your forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms all the way up to standing. And exhale, hands to heart center. We're going to take our little vinyasa from the top. Go ahead and inhale your arms up. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, go ahead and plant the palms for your plank. We're going to take that chaturanga vinyasa again. So inhale, shift forward. Exhale, bend at the elbows. Inhale, open up to your upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. So we're going to play around with our wild thing here as we go into our next little lungy flow. I want you to inhale your right leg up and back. Exhale, bend at the knee. Try to kick yourself in the butt with your heel. If this is enough, just stay here. If you want to try our wild thing, flipping over, drop that foot. Pressing the hips up and open. Finding your wild thing, pressing your hips and your chest up towards the ceiling. And then when you're ready, shift back into your three-legged dog. Kicking the wall here, guys. <laughs> and then you can bring that knee into the chest. Plant it for a lunge. Go ahead, drop that back knee. We're going right to a low lunge here. 
You can bring your hands to your thigh. You can stay down here on blocks. Or you can inhale for the full expression of the pose. You can take a back bend. Wherever you want to go, just breathe. Nice big inhale here. Exhale, release your hands to the mat. Go ahead and straighten that front leg. Come into your half splits. Flexing those toes. Really feeling it in your hamstring. If you would like to come to a full splits, you are welcome to. I like to rock my hips from side to side here. Feels good. <laughs> All right, so we come back into your low lunge, and we're going to take it to a side lunge here. So you're just spinning on that foot to open up to the long edge of your mat. So I'll we'll do that again. Coming from here, and I'm spinning. If this is too much for you, you can definitely take your side lunge up here. Finding that side lunge, making sure that foot is flat, playing the toes. If your hands come to heart center, maybe you take a bind. You can always keep your hands on the ground if you need to. And just breathe. When you're ready, bring your hands to the mat. We're going to go back to our low lunge. And then we're going to find a pigeon. So this right foot is going to come to the left wrist. And you're going to bring your shin parallel to the front of your mat. So dropping into your pigeon. Nice big hip opener here. This um, left leg is straight back behind you. Take a second to just take a little back bend here before you release and put your pigeon to sleep or play around with any other variations. If you need extra support, you can put this block right underneath your hip over here and just breathe here for about three breaths. I love pigeon, it's probably my most favorite hip opener. When you're ready, you can come back to your palms. Now we're going to press back into a three-legged dog. If that's too much for you, go through your table, take a break, whatever you need to do, listen to your body. Go ahead and tuck those back toes. You're going to press into your palms and step back to a three-legged dog. Then go ahead and release. We'll take it to the other side. Inhale your left leg up and back. Don't forget about our wild thing. Exhale, bend the knee. Open up the hip. And maybe if you want to take it all the way there, flipping your dog as it's called. Come in that wild thing, pressing the hips up, the chest up. And then, when you're ready, transition back to your down facing dog and bring that knee into the chest, plant it for your lunge. When drop the back knee, flip the toes, come into your high lunge, whatever variation you like. Bring it back to your breath. I know we can get a little out of breath when we're doing all this crazy stuff, but always bring it back. Focus. Nice big inhale here. Exhale, release, hands to the mat. Straighten that front leg. Find your half splits. Maybe shake out your hips. Maybe take a full split. I don't know how my split's doing today. My hip's kind of wonky. But we always have to remember that we have good days, we have bad days. Sometimes our bodies are just like, nah. And we have to listen to that. We have to be like, okay. Cool, you need to rest, I get it, you know. All right, we're gonna come back into that low lunge. Don't mind my knees popping. And we're gonna come to that um, side lunge. So again, this is a matter of just spinning open. Coming to that low lunge. I hope you're enjoying the view of my backside. <laughs> Hanging out here. Don't forget to breathe. Maybe take a bite, maybe leave your hands on the mat. And then slowly transition back into your low lunge. We're going to take that pigeon. So you're bringing this um, foot to your right ankle. Parallel to the front of your mat. Putting up the hips, finding that pigeon again. If you need that block, just sit right underneath your hip for extra support. Maybe take that back bend before you go anywhere. And then put your pigeon to sleep. Or take any variation you like, king pigeon, mermaid.
And when you're ready, come back to your palms. Again, we're going to come in that three-legged downward dog again. And please feel free to skip it. Go back to your table. If you're going to try it, tuck your toes, press into your palm, and step back to that three-legged dog. And again, release into your downward facing dog. Take a rest here, guys. Come to your child's pose. Come hold your downward dog. Take a vinyasa. Whatever you need to do. Wherever you are, bring it back to your intention. Even if you're having a rough time today or you're like, oh my gosh, it's so hard to put all these poses into a flow, it's okay. You did a whole yoga, you did 30 days of yoga. You did an incredible thing. And don't beat yourself up if you're having trouble keeping up or you're like, holy crap, I see me, look at me, I'm even out of breath, but I'm talking through these poses, you know? Everybody, our bodies are different. Your body is capable. You, you're just amazing, and you have to give yourself credit for that. You have to remind yourself of that constantly because eventually you'll start to believe it, even if you don't believe it now. All right, from your resting pose, we're all going to meet in our downward facing dog. Inhale, gaze at the top of your mat. Exhale, go ahead and step up into your forward fold. Inhale for your halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up to standing. And exhale, hands to heart center. We're going to play around with our tree pose here. So from your mountain pose, we'll start with the right leg coming up. So put all your weight into your left foot. Maybe you go after the toes on that right foot. Maybe you bring it to your calf. And to bring your hands to heart center. Maybe you can get that foot all the way up to your thigh. Never put it on the knee joint. Maybe you can take the full variation of tree where it's kind of like a half lotus. And maybe you grow your branches. Play around here. Close your eyes for a moment and see what happens to your balance. That's what happens to your balance, right? All right. Two more breaths here. And when you're ready, slowly release that foot. Come back to standing. You can shake it out if you need to. And we'll take it to the other side. So put all your weight into your right foot. Maybe come up to those left toes. Maybe you bring it over to your calf. Maybe bring your hands to heart center. Or grow your branches from here. Maybe you bring that foot all the way up into your thigh. Ooh. Again, focus your gaze, your drishti on something that's not moving. Maybe you come to the full expression here. Oh, maybe you don't. <laughs> Every set side is different. We all have different capabilities on either side of our body. One side's more flexible, one side's less flexible. Bodies are weird, man. Maybe you grow your branches. We spend about two more breaths. Maybe you're like a tree and you're waving in the wind. It's fine. Embrace, embrace the wiggle and then you can release. <laughs> Shake it out. We're going to come to a seat on our mats now. We're just going to take a seat. We're going to take a forward fold here. So bring your legs out in front of you. Inhale your arms up, straight spine. And exhale, fold over your legs. Doesn't matter if you can touch your toes or not. It's not what this pose is about. Really getting into that low back, your spine. You can bend at your knees if you want even deeper um, low back stretch and just pull. And then go ahead and slowly come up. We'll take a wide legged forward fold here. Didn't forget about this pose. Open your legs up. You can always take your wide legged fold standing too, just for the purpose of this class. I've incorporated it as sitting. Inhale for a flat spine. And exhale, fold over your legs. Again, it doesn't matter how far you can come down. If you're up here, that's still a fold. I really want you to focus on the way it feels in your hamstrings and your hips, that straight spine. You don't want to just bleh, like all the way down. That doesn't, doesn't benefit anybody. <laughs> Spend about three breaths here. Inhale, come back to a straight spine. All right, we got our reverse plank going on here. We're going to get into some shoulder um, stuff. We're going to get into a boat pose. 
Actually, why don't we do fish first and warm up our shoulders a little bit. So fish pose, you can use a block if you need to, but full fish, you're gonna come down to your back. You're gonna bring your hands kind of right at the, your low back where your hips meet your spine. And you're just gonna really press into that, in your, your forearm on the mat, your shoulders, your shoulder blades are pinching behind your back. You're opening up the chest and you're dropping the head back. Now, if you're like me and you have a very tight chest, that head isn't gonna touch the mat. This is where a block comes in. And you can place your head on the block. You can also take like a little baby fish where you come all the way down here to your mat. And you just press up. You, the goal is to get to all the way to the crown of your head, but for those of us that have tight chests or shoulders, it's, it's rough. Don't forget to breathe here. One more inhale, and then go ahead and release. Draw your knees into your chest, and give them a little squeeze here. And then I just want you to rock and roll back up to a seat. Just wanted to get that little back bend in before we go into our reverse plank because reverse plank can be a little intense. So your reverse plank, I'm gonna start with a reverse crab just so you have an option if this is too much for you. So your hands are coming behind you with your um, fingers facing your butt. For your reverse crab, you're just gonna press your hips up to the ceiling. You're gonna feel those shoulder blades squeeze behind your back. You're opening up the throat chakra, looking up, and go ahead and release. Now we're gonna try the full variation. If not, just come back to that reverse um, table, little crab guy. If you're gonna try it, bring your legs out to straight, and then just press those hips up towards the ceiling. Don't forget to breathe, and exhale, release. Go ahead and take it forward fold over your legs, just a little decompress of the spine of the shoulders. All right, we're gonna do just one boat pose here and then some more back bends, a little boat pose to get into the core before we get more into the back. So your boat pose, you're seated on your mat, you're bringing your knees up and your spot, you're starting to lean back, straight spine, and as soon as you lean back, you're gonna feel that core catch. Maybe this is your boat. Maybe you lift up the toes. Maybe you straighten the legs. And we hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and take a nice big forward fold over your legs. All right, guys, it's time for camel. Go ahead and tuck your knees underneath you, coming up to your knees. All right, camel pose. I'm gonna take you through three variations. Find your edge. Find what's intense enough for you. Listen to your body. All right, so your hips are gonna stay over your knees. Your goal is to get them to stay over your knees. Even when you're leaning back, you're really pressing those hips forward. We're gonna bring our hands to right where, I looks like where my love handles meet my waist. I have a little like, crevice here. So kind of right where your spine meets your hips, pulling your shoulder blades behind you. You're gonna inhale, and as, if someone's pulling a string up from your chest, you're just gonna inhale that chest up, drop the head back. Now this is the first variation. Stay here, breathe here, I know it's hard. And inhale, come up very, very slowly, take a seat on your knees. So we wanna remember about back bends. It, it, when you open up the chest like that, it becomes hard to breathe because your lungs are like stretching. You're like, holy crap, take it slow. You don't wanna pass out, um, that would be bad. So just take it nice and slow, listen to your body. We're gonna come back up. This time I want you to come to your toes so your heels are up. If you want to, you don't have to try this. Bringing your hands to the small of your back, pressing your shoulder blades back. Inhale, chest opens, leaning back. Maybe you grab a hold of your, your heels here. Pushing those hips forward. Opening up the back, shoulder blades are squeezing. Breathing. And inhale, come up very, very, very slow. And then sit on your legs. We got one more. Again, don't, you don't have to keep progressing. You can stick with the first one that we did, totally fine. Last one, feet are flat on the mat. Bringing your hands to the small of your back. 
Inhale, start to press it open, opening up the chest, maybe dropping your hands back to your heels and pressing those hips forward. We're breathing. Inhale, come up and go ahead and take a seat on your feet. Take a child's pose here. Decompress the spine. A little surrender here, a little forward fold, because after this we got crow, we got headstand, and then we're gonna cool down. <laughs> so I got three breaths here and rest. And again, bringing it back to your intention. You're awesome. You're doing it. You're, you made it through 30 days of yoga, and now you're doing a full class. Like, crazy, right? Give yourself a pat on the back. All right, when you're ready, go ahead and come up. We're gonna play around with our crow and our headstand. So, block, pillow if you need it. You can also use a strap wrapped around your arms. We're gonna start with our crow. So, for your crow, if you've never done it, or you're afraid of it, or you're still working on it, I want you to take this pillow, place it in front of your face, a little crash mat. You're not gonna fall on your face, but sometimes it helps to have a little reassurance that is there. Take your block, come up onto your toes, on your block. So this is just essentially getting your feet up off the mat. So basically when you're sitting on a block, even if your feet don't leave the block, you're in row pose. Bring your palms to the mat. Now, your palms need to press away from the mat. Nice and flat, really energetic, pressing away. Your knees are gonna come up onto your triceps, and I know it hurts. <laughs> You might get bruises, it's okay, I promise. Face pillow, pressing into the hands, knees come up, and you're looking forward. If you look back and under, you're just gonna do a little somersault, right? Really engaging the core. You're here, you're in it. You're bending at the elbows where those chaturanga arms come in. Maybe one foot lifts, maybe the other foot lifts. And voila. But even if your feet don't lift up, and they're on the block, you're in crow, your feet are off the ground, they're on the block, and you got it. Like, it's okay to take modifications. It's okay, you will work your way up, even if you don't, again, give yourself credit for what your body can do. You are amazing. I'm gonna say it a billion times, I'm gonna say it a billion more times. I'm so proud of you guys. All right, headstand. So we're just gonna play around with tripod headstand. If you'd like to learn bound headstand, I have another video on my YouTube, Headstand 101. But for this class purposes, we're gonna go from crow to our headstand. I find that that's the easiest kind of transition. So from your crow pose, and if you're like, oh, hell no, I'm not going upside down, keep playing around with your crow. You can also get up against a wall if you need it. So from your crow pose, we're gonna to go to a little teddy bear. So it's super simple. We're here, palms are flat, we're in our crow, we're rocking it, crow pose, it's as simple as think, you're in headstand. On the crown of your head, really pushing away from the mat, pushing into your shoulders, so you're not crunching into your neck, you're in headstand. Maybe you start to lift those legs up. Headstand, tripod, maybe you come back. intimidated if you're like oh my god this crazy lady is doing crazy things and I can't do that give it a try put the pillow behind you the worst thing you're gonna fall out of it do it against the wall please don't kick up I'd never recommend kicking up to headstand you can if you want to but I promise you're gonna build so much more core strength if you work on pressing up to a headstand play around you got a couple minutes you got this check out my headstand 101 video if you need more in-depth headstand training um, I don't have time to go through it in this video, but like it's so helpful. I'm so proud. I love it when people send me pictures like, oh my god, I got my headstand because of you. I'm like, yes, yes, queen, you got this. Give you another minute of play time. You can also just take your tripod headstand, not from Crow, 
and that's just kind of like a weird, I don't know, it's like a downward dog from your head kind of guy, right? And you just pop those wings up there. This is called teddy bear. I'm not sure why I think it looks like an upside down teddy bear. And then just, ugh. Engaging the core. Now we're breathing. It's really hard to talk, talk upside down, guys. <laughs> All right, when you're ready, come on down. Come down to your back. We got like three more poses and then we're done. All right, so come into your back. Bring your foot bottoms to the mat. Heels are gonna be as close as your butt, to your butt as you can get them. We're coming to our bridge pose. Then we're gonna go to a wheel. If you're kind of sketchy about wheel, just repeat your bridge. But for your bridge, arms are at the side. Just gonna inhale those hips up to the ceiling. If you want a little bit more, you can clasp your hands underneath you, shimmy those shoulders underneath you, and take a nice big chest opener here. Woo. Slippery hands. <laughs> Pressing up and open. Inhale up a little bit more. And exhale, release one vertebrae at a time back down to the mat. My windshield wiper out your legs here. Now, you can take another bridge, or we can play around with wheel. So for your wheel, for your still in the same position, I always have to scooch my hair out because I've placed my hands on my hair before and then press up in the wheel and I ripped hair out of my head. Zero out of 10 would not recommend. Bring your hands to flip right next to your ears so your fingers are facing back towards you. And you're gonna use your core strength and your upper body strength to push yourself up to wheel. So you're just gonna inhale up. Ooh, guys, I'm struggling today. It's a struggle bus. Pressing your chest and your shoulders over your wrists. Breathe. Then go ahead and release, tuck your chin, chin into your chest and come back down. Now watch your windshield wiper your legs here. I hope you guys can see how much I'm struggling. I think it's because of the weather. I don't know if you can tell. Super cloudy outside. I always lose my mojo when it's like that, but I just want you guys to know that it's okay. Even people like me who do yoga all day, every day, we have bad days. It's okay. Go ahead and dry your knees into your chest. I think that's it, guys. We hit every single pose. How crazy is that? I just wanted to give you a little taste of what it's like to put all these poses together kind of into a little flow, into a class, what it looks like. All right, bring your arms out to a T position. These twists aren't part of our challenge, but I want you to cool down. So drop your knees over to the right. Decompress the spine. If your wrists are feeling kind of funky after crow and after wheel, just do some little wrist circles here. Bring it back to your breath. Inhale your legs to center and exhale, drop them over to the other side. Again, if you need to, you can relax your wrists. Go ahead and draw your knees back to center. Give yourself a nice big squeeze here. Draw your forehead up to your knees. I like to rock from side to side, massage out my low back. You can release, bring your foot bottoms up towards the ceiling, grab either on the inside or the outside, coming to happy baby, my favorite, favorite pose. Pulling those knees down towards the mat, really opening up the hips here, and popping up the low back. Again, you know me, I like to rock from side to side. It's like I can't sit still, which is why I do yoga, why I do meditation. We try. Go ahead and release. Find your Shavasana, your final resting pose, that corpse pose, everyone's favorite pose. Take up as much space as you need on your mat. If you know me and you know how I teach, I always remind people to take up space. 
We're tired of not taking up space. We want to take up all the space. You don't need to shrink yourself for society or for anybody else. Close your eyes here. Relax. Rest. Bring it back to your intention. Meditate on how amazing you are, and I'll bring you back when it's time. And bring your awareness back into your space, back into your body. You can wiggle your toes or wiggle your fingers. You can roll out your wrists or roll out your ankles. And then you're ready to take a nice big morning stretch. Stretch your arms and legs out like you just woke up in the morning. Nice and big and tall. And then draw your knees into your chest, little squeeze here. And when you're ready, you can drop over to either side, keeping your knees into your chest for just a little fetal pose. Symbol of fresh starts and new beginnings. When you're ready, press yourself up to a seat, keeping your eyes closed at a seat that you are comfortable in. Bring your hands to either side of you on the mat. Feeling the mat beneath your fingertips. Inhale your arms up, taking all that awesome energy you just created. Exhale, bring them back down to the mat, release anything that doesn't serve you today. Inhale your arms up. Exhale, draw your palms together and your hands to your heart center. Again, give yourself a pat on the back. You did it, you're done. I Maybe mean, you're not done, you're gonna keep doing yoga, but. You completed this challenge, Bend Your Bod 2019. You are amazing. And just bring a smile to your face as you remind yourself of that. The light in me honors the light in you. We've got our practice. Namaste.